Here's another MIDI video uh, specifically about having the app Stage Tracks 3 communicate with your Helix. I did a video like this a while ago about the app OnSong and having it communicate. Um, OnSong is great. It has like a thousand features if you unlock them all. The only problem is I only use about 20 of those features. And for what I want my app to do, Stage Tracks 3 seems a little more user friendly for me. Um, so I'm really playing around with Stage Tracks 3 and seeing if that doesn't become my main uh, song charting app. There's plenty of videos out there about how to use Stage Tracks. Three, this is specifically about MIDI communication between these two things. Um, I'm making it because I couldn't really find anything like that online, and I am completely a trial and error guy when it comes to MIDI. So I'm doing this as much for myself as well. So two years from now, I remember what the hell I did. First thing I did was make up a, a fake playlist with four fake songs, A, double A, triple A, and triple A with a capital. Um, and since they are, since these MIDI events are going to be um, uh, time code related, I did need to add some fake lengths of songs uh, just so I could scroll through the song and have it triggered. So um, in correspondence to my four fake songs on stage tracks, I also have four four um, fake presets in my Helix. There's A, double A, triple A, and triple A with the capital. Um, it's in a different bank. Um, it's gonna take me, I'm not gonna bother scrolling. You're just gonna have to trust me. It's in a different bank. Uh, so we'll get there. But as you can see right now, um, if I tap double A, you'll see that the preset will change. So I tap double A, and now the preset, probably hard to see when you go home. So the preset has changed to double A. So I have managed to do that correctly. If I hit triple A, then the preset changes to triple A. And if I change to three A with a capital, let me go back. So here you see I'm in bank seven. If I hit this one, it jumps to a different bank, bank six. And it is in fact, triple A with a capital. So I do have that program correctly. Let's do a deeper dive into the first song. How did I do it? Well, first, here's the preset so you can follow along at home. Uh, snapshot one is the top two effects. Snapshot two is the bottom two effects. Snapshot three are all the effects. Snapshot four is nothing. I just use it as a, another button to hit. Snapshot one will take us back to the top two effects. So that's how that works. Now, how did I enter that MIDI information into stage tracks so they talk? Well, you go into the lyrics and edit lyrics. And here's the MIDI information. So as you can see, um, here's the first preset on Helix A. And there's your MIDI information right there. So CC32-6, that is the bank. CC32 and 6 is the bank. I know the bank technically says 7, but that's because MIDI starts with 0, whereas these don't. So this would be MIDI 0, MIDI 1, MIDI 2, MIDI 3, MIDI 4, MIDI 5, MIDI 6, which is why that says CC32-6. So at the very top of my lyrics, this is the format, bracket, MIDI, colon, CC32.6, at whatever channel your MIDI thing is. Mine is at one. I don't know channels. This is the only MIDI thing I have. So I do have the Helix set to MIDI channel one, and that's what it is. So CC32.6 at one. CC32.6 at channel one. Um... Now, the, the preset within the bank is PC-108. Now, that one is same thing, inside the bracket, or I guess you could do your own separate bracket and go MIDI colon, but that comma separates it. PC-108 at 1, which corresponds to the preset. PC-108, again, at channel 1. So that's how it calls it up immediately. So as soon as I call up the song, this MIDI information gets sent over. So CC32, uh, number six is the bank. 
PC-108 is the preset. And CC69.0, 69.0 is the snapshot. So now how do I change the snapshots? Well, I went ahead and programmed some. So what I wanna do is every five seconds, I wanna change to a different snapshot. So snapshot two, you can see it goes from 69.0 to 69.1. Snapshot three goes to 69.2. Snapshot four goes to 69.3. I know it's weird because the numbers are one off, but MIDI starts at zero and there's no snapshot zero. So everything's one off. It, it, it's goofy, but that's the way it is. So starting off CC 69.0, that's the first thing it reads. Then at five seconds, and syntax is super important, so it's bracket, MIDI at and whatever the timestamp is, and it's minute, minute, get out of there. And it's minutes, colon, seconds, dot, milliseconds. So at five seconds, I want it to go pay attention to how it's written, since it won't understand it otherwise. Um, so at five seconds, I want CC69, the snapshot, to change to one, which is actually snapshot two. At 10 seconds, I want it to go to snapshot 3, which is 69.2. 15 seconds, 69.3, which is snapshot 4. Then at 20 seconds, I want it to go back to snapshot 1, like we started, which is 69.0. And it's all at channel 1. So now we're back here, and here's the preset A. So snapshot 1, where we start, is the top two effects. Uh, maybe you can see those top two effects highlighted. Snapshot two, the bottom two effects are highlighted. Snapshot three, they're all highlighted. Snapshot four doesn't do anything. It's just another button. Snapshot one goes back to the top two. So when I start playing the song, just to I'll go to a different song first and then go back to it just so it can completely reset snapshot one with the correct preset. So when I hit play, every five seconds, this will change. Let's see. There's playing, so... Five seconds should go to two. Another five seconds should go to three. Another five seconds should go to four, but no changes up there. Another five seconds should go back to one. Nice. All right. So all those changes were done hands-free, which is great, as the song is following along and you have it preset and, and the lyrics are scrolling. It changes all your stuff automatically. You don't got to even press a button or think about it. So it's really cool. Same thing I was doing with OnSong. So that is pretty tedious, though, trying to time out exactly when you want everything to change and all the time code and figuring out when the chorus is. Okay, the chorus is at 25 seconds. I need a new snapshot. So there is a way to program this automatically. Um, the first thing, if you go to global settings, this is one thing that you have to make sure of. Global settings, and then you go over to MIDI. And you go to the second page of MIDI. See right here where it says snapshot CC send? That was off by default. I had to turn it on. So I'm guessing that's the only way that the Helix is going to send a CC signal to stage tracks. So you can actually program it on the fly automatically. So make sure that's turned on. So now that that's turned on in global settings, now we're gonna start plugging in all the snapshot changes automatically without having to figure out the time code and enter all that stuff manually. So I erased all those other snapshot entries. Um, I left the initial stuff at the top because I don't know how to get that command automatically. So that stuff I entered manually and that's gonna live there. But now as we change, as we go through the song, every five seconds, I'm going to change snapshots. So how we do that is we hit this little MIDI looking thing right there. So we tap that. And then down here, covered by the keyboard, it says waiting for MIDI events. So all we got to do is we start playing the song. And every five seconds or so, I'm going to change snapshots. And you should see it um, go there. Going to change it again. There, gonna change it again. 
about that time. Then we're gonna go back to the first snapshot, right about there. So you can see all that stuff added whenever I press the buttons. So that's why we have, uh, you know, milliseconds introduced now, because obviously I didn't hit it exactly on the whole second. When we're done changing snapshots, we hit the stop and then we save and then we get out of here done and now we're back. So now um, like it'll change what, six seconds, 11 seconds, 16 seconds, I don't remember. So when we hit play, everything still should change. Let's see what that clock says. Oh, you know what? I never rewound the song. My bad. All right, now the song's starting at zero. So six seconds should change, and it does. And then 11 seconds should change, and it does. And then, I don't know, 16 seconds or so, I guess, is where we did it. And then I back to here at 21 seconds or something. Yep, great. So everything worked. I'll give you one more example a little quickly. So let's go to the second song. Tap that, calls up the correct preset. Let's go into the, and see how it called up snapshot two, because that's where I wanted the second song to start. Go into the lyric editor, edit lyrics. So there's the information, uh, CC32, bank six, PC109, that was the preset. CC69 is the snapshot dot one not zero. Remember, this is zero, this is one. So that's why it started there. So same thing. Let's go down here. Um, let's show the keyboard real quick. Show keyboard. Let's make a couple spaces. There we go. So now if I hit this MIDI thing again, hit that little MIDI button, it's listening for events hidden by the keyboard. So as we play the song, I'll just hit some more snapshots and I'll mix it around a little bit. So I'm playing the song. And right about now we'll go to snapshot three, writes the code. Now we'll go back to snapshot one, writes the code. Now we'll go to snapshot four, writes the code. Back to snapshot two, writes the code. So hit stop listening. You can stop the song playback, hit save, hit done. I'm just going to clear the cache by going to a different song. And now back to double A. Starting on snapshot two. And if I hit play, all those snapshot changes should just follow along. So what do we go? Two to three. And then I think we went to one. And then we went up to four. And then we went back to two. Boom. All right, so one last thing I want to show you, and I wish I had a shortcut for this, but what if you're not a snapshot guy? What if you're a stomp box guy and you want to hit all these effects individually? Um, well, you can do that too, but I don't know how to do that automatically. You have to, as far as I know right now, program all the, the timestamps manually. So how we did that is we're back in song one and I erased, um, those last couple snapshot changes. So right now we start at snapshot zero, go to snapshot one, go bet. I'm sorry. We start at snapshot one, which is technically zero, go to snapshot two, then go back to snapshot one. So what I want to do now is I want to take this little, uh, this, so I'm still in snapshot mode, but I want to take this stomp box, the optical tremolo, and I want that to turn on and I want that to turn off. So how do we do that? Well, one thing I found is that if you're in snapshot mode and you want to control stomp boxes additionally, they can't be on the same foot switches as the snapshots. So if you're in snapshot mode, uh, I don't know how you have your Helix configured, but these four up here are at large. So I have foot switch one, two, three, four, five assigned to the optical tremolo. So this is from the Helix manual, um, all the different foot switches and CC values. So you can see there uh, MIDI 53, emulate stomp foot switch modes FS5. So foot switch five is CC53. So what I did here is at 15 seconds, bracket MIDI at 15 seconds, colon, CC53, which is foot switch five, 
dot 127. You should probably know that MIDI values go from 0 to 127. 127 means fully on, 0 means fully off, so that's how I did it. Um, so CC53 dot 127 all the way on at channel 1 again. Five seconds later, at 20 seconds, I want CC53 to go to 0 value, CC53.0 at 1. So at 15 seconds, this will turn on, and then 20 seconds, this will turn off. So that's why I, so following along, save that, done. So if I play the song, uh, starting from the beginning, we'll go to snapshot two. And then you can see the bottom two effects. This is the optical tremolo. Now we go back to one, optical tremolo turns off, and this should, tra yep, that turned on, and now five seconds later, it should turn off. There you go. So again, the moral of the story is if you're going to do snapshots and stomp boxes, make sure they're not on the same row. You can, however, go to stomp mode and watch all the different stomp boxes turn on and off um, based on what snapshots it's recalling. So if I hit play again, we start on snapshot one, which are these two effects. Snapshot two are these two effects. Then we go back to snapshot one, which are these two effects. And then this one turns on after a few seconds. And then it turns off again. There you go. Sorry if some of that was confusing or convoluted. I'm doing it sort of stream of consciousness and I don't understand MIDI all that well. But hopefully the last however many minutes can help you if you're green to all this. And uh, check out Stage Tracks 3. It's pretty cool.